Hi guys, thanks for joining me for a quick peek into Red Power 2 pre-release 4, which is for Minecraft 1.0. Well, it's finally out and it's packed with cool new features and I'd say we take a look, check it out and see what it's all about. The first block I want to show is the sorting machine. The sorting machine looks a little daunting when you look when you take a first look at it, but it's really quite easy to understand once you've got your head wrapped around. So basically, this sorting machine has eight different columns and you could can put items in there. Those columns can be tagged with a certain color. You can select the color by clicking the button below. Left clicking will advance the color, right clicking will go back these colors will be assigned to the items when they come out. As you can see, they are wrapped in those little tags and those tags will prevent them from entering tubes which have a different color. So they can always go through regular tubes and through the tubes matching their own color, but never through different colored tubes. So, this way you can still apply all the other things you know about tubes. Items will always go to the nearest inventory. And using those tags, you can actually send them wherever you need them. To make those colored tubes, you simply take a paintbrush of the appropriate color and right click to paint your tube. I'll show you how to make those in a minute, but first let me finish explaining the sorting machine. In this first mode, selected by this button over here, you'll notice there is a sliding window moving from column to column, trying to pull any item from this stack, from this column and tagging it and sending it off. Whenever it can pull at least one of the items in the column, it tags it and, send it on it and sends it on its way. If there is none of these items available in the inventory, it will wait for an item to become available. The second mode, which is this one, acts a little different. You still have the sliding window moving from column to column, but in this mode it will try to pull all the items in the column from your inventory. If it cannot pull all items, then it will wait until it can. As you can see, there are no items coming out. That's because there are not all of these items in the column in the chest. The next mode looks a little different and it's basically the same as the previous one. It will simply not have a sliding window. It will select ran columns randomly. So it will simply match any column that it can pull from the chest and pull the whole column, tag it and send it on its way. The fourth mode, this one, will simply try to get any item out of the chest which is available in the in the columns. So it will simply start by pulling from the top left of the of the inventory. As you can see it's currently pulling nickelite because it's the first item in the chest and will tag it in the appropriate color and send it on its way. The last and the fifth mode is very similar to the fourth mode. It still will try to pull any item from the chest, but it has a default mode. As you can see, there is an additional color available here. Any items not matched in any of the columns will simply be assigned this color and sent on its way. You don't have to assign a color. The this icon represents 
no color at all. So if you don't want to tag some items, you can always use this color, or this symbol rather. So that's the sorting machine. And it's quite useful. You can plan your, uh, your storage facility and set it, set it up in a very, very easy way. And it's very powerful. Well, once you have set it all up, you probably want to retrieve items. Usually you'd have to apply a transposer to your chests and use a special signal system to um, pull or request any items from them. But there's a new block called the retriever, which looks like this. The retriever works a little like a remote filter. You can put some items in there. For example, let me put some torches in here. Let's say seven torches. As you can see, this chest is empty. And I've put seven torches in here. If I give it a redstone pulse like this, it will look in all the connected inventories for some torches. Well, unfortunately, I forgot to put some torches in there. So um, let's take, for example, some seeds. So um, forgive me, uh, there are no torches available in any connected chest, so it obviously can't um, pull any torches from there. But seeds, as we saw, there are seeds over there somewhere. And when I give it a signal, it will request seeds and as you can see it will request the exact amount as i put in there so if i put two seeds in there one pulse will fetch me two seeds in return well these are the most complicated new machines which are not that complicated if you think about it you can use the sorting machine inline uh, and feed it from a, from a tube, but of course um, it will not work with the column modes. It will simply tag items when they come through. Both the sorting machine and the retriever require electricity to operate. As you can see, they are connected with the blue, blue alloy wire and you also see the small battery charge symbol over on the left and the efficiency meter on the right. The new power net, um, LRM has rewritten the power net. It's a little better now. You can use longer cables as you can see the cable is rather long and before you'd have a lot of line sacks so you'd get very little power when you put wires on a large distance so that's fixed now and um, well you can also measure your voltage and amps using a new voltmeter which is crafted like this yeah, and um, I'll get back to blue I'll get back to electricity in a minute. So let's first explain how to make paint and brushes. To make those, you'll need a new alloy called tin plate. Make it from iron and tin, like this. And with those tin plates, you can simply form a shape like that to receive a paint can. Well, all you need now is some flax seeds, which, if you remember, you can obtain by breaking a flax plant. Or also, if you do not have flax planted somewhere, you can always uh, break some tall grass and you'll have a chance 
for some flax seeds from there. So just put your paint can with them flax seeds. Those will be replaced by linseed oil from a chemistry bench once it's available and some dye of your choice. For example, I'll take the red one and it will give me red paint. Now we'll, we'll need a paintbrush. It's simply a stick and some wool. Well, just I forgot my wool, but I have some wool over here. So let's take some wool and make ourselves a paintbrush. Or let's make two. So paintbrush can be combined with the red paint or any color of paint and will, it will give you an appropriately colored paintbrush if you craft it in your crafting area like this. Or it can also, yeah, I'll need that, you can also right click your paint bucket and it will color the first uncolored, uh, first dry brush in your quick bar. Every application of paint to a brush will use up some of the paint in the bucket. If the bucket is empty, you'll be given back an empty can, so you don't have to craft a lot of them. So, um, in the same way, painting some tubes will use the paint from the brush, and also if you used up all the paint on a brush, you'll be given back an empty brush. So, that's how you paint the tubes. Let's quickly take a look at some changes. For example, the filter now has nine slots. In the previous release, the filter only had one, si one single slot. The filter now accepts more than one item and it will basically work the same way as before, but you can use it to filter more items in one pass, like this. For example, I have, or I don't have, let me put some dirt and some wood in here. If I pump it out like this, uh, yeah, well, well, you get the idea. Basically, it will only accept the uh, gravel and cobblestone and, well, none of the other, other items. Before, you had to use several filters if you wanted to filter multiple items. That's what I was going for. So, um, another change is the item detector can now also hold multiple items and it has several modes, three to be exact. This is the first mode, which is the default mode and the way it operates be operated before. Whenever an item goes through the item detector in this mode, it will simply emit a redstone pulse. In this mode, the second mode, it will only emit a single pulse for each stack. So in, in the first mode, this one, it will also emit a pulse for each item in a stack. For example, if you send a stack of 10 items through, it will give 10 pulses. In the second mode, it will only give a single pulse for the whole stack, however large or small the stack may be. And the third mode, it's um, a jammed mode. So that means basically if you have um, your target inventory when it's full and you can't deliver any items into it, the item detector will jam, hold the item and emit a constant signal 
when it's jammed. So it can be used to detect when your inventory is full. So, um, yeah, I think now that we know how to make color tubes, I should add some nodes. Those tubes have secondary properties like um, color tubes will not connect to another color tubes tube. It will only collect to uh, connect, sorry, to an uncolored tube or obviously tubes of the same color. So I built this strange setup to show you the next block, which is called a buffer. The buffer is basically a chest with five different compartments, as you can see here. Those compartments represent input sides. As you can see, the top surface, that's the output side, and all the other sides of the of this buffer can be filled, for example, like this with tubes. And for every side, items will only go into the corresponding compartment of the buffer. That's very useful if you want to have, well, a buffer, like a chest, which will never fill up with only one kind of item. So if you deliver, for example, cobblestone and let's say smooth stone, you can make one delivery from one side and the other from another side and it will only fill up one compartment for each side. So it will never run full and have no space available for additional items. So let's just quickly put some things in here. I have those paint brushes, which I used to color those tubes. And I'm go just going to show you how these are connected. For example, I'll just throw the brushes into the appropriately colored slot. So you can see where they go. As you can see, each brush went through the color, the same color tube, and each brush is in a different compartment. So if I want to get those items out of there, I'd have to um, use some kind of uh, well, retriever. You can, of course, use a retriever or a transposer or a filter or even which is very useful the sorting machine you can connect the sorting machine over here and you remember the sorting machine has a column and those compartments can very easily be used to set up the columns um, from the sorting machine as you can see those five entries in your sorting machine column, they match the five different compartments of the buffer block quite nicely. So, but I'll be using a transposer just because I already have one here and I don't need to connect electricity. And I'll show you something else. So you certainly know what this will do if I power this transposer. It will try to collect items from this inventory. The top surface has access to all the uh, compartments. So, but in this configuration, I'd be hard pressed to connect my redstone signal. I might have to use jacketed wire or put a cover and lay wire on there. And for this purpose, there's a new kind of, well, wire, let's call it wire, which is the redstone tube. You can make it like this. <coughs> Sorry. The redstone tube will work like a regular tube, which also happens to be 
a jacketed wire. So you can connect your tube to the back of your machine and do whatever you like. For example, connect it to this chest. And now you will certainly want to emit a redstone signal pulse. And to do this, you want to connect it to, for example, this timer. It will not connect to regular red alloy wire. So if you want to put a signal to this tube, you should do something like this and use a single piece of jacketed wire. And this will connect the redstone signal to the tube. It will also connect to regular redstone dust, but that's not very flexible and I'm not quite sure if that's a bug or not. But anyway, the timer is connected and the timer will now emit the signal through the tube and, well, to this machine, which is very handy. You don't need to put down another separate wire or jacketed cable or whatever you want to do. You can simply use the tube itself to connect redstone signal. So, as you can see, it got all the paintbrushes out of our inventory. So, let's just... Well, go for what I said before. I wanted to show you the some additions and improvements to the Blutricity system. A major improvement is the introduction of those battery boxes. You can craft batteries now. I think it was something like this. I might be wrong. But anyway, for these kind of well, I don't have an acolyte anyway. Um, let's just say you craft battery this way. And from a battery you craft a battery box that way. Okay, now, a battery box. Let me just get my pick back. A battery box will store energy if you break it and I do this for demonstration purposes for so you can see charging. So let me put it down. You can see the surplus of energy will be put into the battery of the box and when the energy drops here, energy from the battery will be put back, reconverted and power the well external power supply. So you can use this battery box to, for example, power your furnaces when it's nighttime or anything else you want to power. And um, well, if your charge doesn't doesn't isn't sufficient to operate your device. For example, the sorting machine doesn't really require much energy, so a single solar panel would be probably enough to um, supply all the energy you need. A furnace will use, I don't know, um, I think seven or eight solar panels for continuous operation. Well, let me put it down again. As you can see, the charge level of the battery is also represented on the texture of the block so you can easily take a look and see at a quick glance how much energy you've got in your batteries so that's very handy and you'll also notice that those are not connected by any wire those batteries are connected to um, a very large field of solar, solar panels, which are also not 
connected through any wire, which means the redstone, no, oh, sorry, the electricity devices will conduct the energy through themselves. So you can simply put a solar panel on top of a battery box, connect those to furnace directly. Those wires would not be required. You could simply put the furnace next to the battery and it would, would connect. But of course you not you don't have the spatial proximity always, so you probably want some of those blue aloe wires to supply energy to further away machines. So that's pretty much all. One last thing there is, those funny blocks over here, those are storage blocks for your gemstones. You craft them like this, this and that, very easy and of course you can also retrieve your gems by simply putting it in your crafting field. So, I'm not sure if I already mentioned it, um, creative mode also kind of works right now already. You can now break blocks, but um, they will not simply vanish like they usually do in creative mode, but they will just drop like regular items. But it's much better if you do creative mode. This update will be much appreciated, I think. And as a final note, I'd like to add that because Minecraft 1.0 uses some more item IDs than before, it now occupies some of the item IDs that Red Power used in PO3. So PO4 moved its default items, item IDs to other IDs, and uh, which also means that previous worlds you have already created with previous Red Power versions will not work anymore. So you'll have to, well, convert your levels or resign your IDs or, well, simply start over. You'll still, even if you start over, have to delete your Red Power configuration file from your .minecraft directory so it can regenerate your IDs. Um, it will automatically reassign them if you do this, but this will break your worlds. If you do want to play them, you should consider using some conversion tool like Midas, or I have written a conversion tool of my own. It's a little more complicated, but it might be useful. I will put it up on the recipe list. And, um, well, if you are interested in this, just check it out and you'll see if that's the thing you need. Well, anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it and I didn't confuse you too much. And I'll see you next time.